everyone. How are you here at AWS with the Napier and NVIDIA Inception uh, booth here? I'm here with Adam, who is with uh, Diligent Robotics. And Adam, I wanted to talk more about Moxon today and then uh, learn more about your journey with NVIDIA Inception program. So before we do that, uh, tell us more about you and your role at uh, Diligent. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. My name is Adam Alabato. I'm a staff robotics engineer here at Diligent Robotics. I've worked at the company for four and a half years, and before that, I was an intern back when we first set up the very first robot. So I've seen the company grow and change a lot, and uh, it's we're really happy to be here. That's awesome, right? And then I want to learn more about the origin of uh, Diligent and what inspired you know founder co-founder to focus more on mobile manipulation robots yeah. for healthcare, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, one of our uh, co-founders, Andrea Tohat, is actually my PhD advisor, so I had a kind of a front row seat as the company got started. And really what we did was Andrea's lab focused a lot on human robot interaction and bring mobile manipulators into really into interacting with, with people. And when you look at where that can be really useful, one place right now is nursing. So the nursing shortage is very severe, and then the you know, COVID-19 only made things worse. Uh, nurses spend up to 40% of their time just walking around hospitals. So that's retrieve items or deliver items. So we thought if we could help with that part of their job, and then we wouldn't be replacing nursing jobs at the same time, we'd be helping them. And we're still helping to close that, that nursing shortage. That's where I am most excited about, right? There's a great tsunami coming, and over 30% of the workforce, older, 55 years and older, uh, aging population is where we have the most in that in the next 10 years. So kudos to you. But tell us more about the inception program, right? And how long have you been with the media inception? How does that work? Yeah, absolutely. So we've been with the Inception program for a while now, and uh, the robot has had NVIDIA jets and chips on it for years. So we're kind of an early adopter getting Edge AI out into the current world. Uh, and yeah, part of the Inception program is you know access to NVIDIA experts and just having a really close uh, collaboration with them has been great for making sure that we're staying up to date on all the newest NVIDIA products and how NVIDIA can expand into physical AI. And then, of course, we're part of the uh, Mass Robotics AWS Physical AI Fellowship as well. So that just kind of adds on to the amount of um, the amount of resources that we have and how we can really like bring those latest uh, advancements in AI into our robots. So you're an early adopter of SPAR, right? And media. Yes. And then 10x you. How does that accelerate the growth? Oh yeah. So so as we move to uh, Moxie Gen 2.0, which we just announced last month. Uh, it was announced during uh, GTCPC. Right, yeah, yeah, I was there. By yeah, way. okay, well, we're very excited about it because we are going to move to four. And then when we move to four, just having that much edge AI, like compute, is really powerful for us because the robot can't be guaranteed to have connectivity at any time in the hospital. The, the Wi Fi may drop or specifically for a highly regulated industry, right? Yes, absolutely. So, but we need reliability at all times. So, be able to do all run the AI models on the cloud will allow us to parse down the edge, will allow us to bring all of the best models like to bear directly inside hospitals. And that's doing things like at first it will be advancing our manipulation capabilities to travel throughout the hospital. Getting the robots fully autonomous so that's the right elevators on its own. That can be a tricky task sometimes. And then moving on above that as we deploy even more advanced models to make the robot more socially aware and navigate more smoothly around people. And then ultimately to unlock new use cases in the hospital. And that would be things like restocking or pick and drop or the robot's actually doing manipulation by the hospital and, and performing even more tasks to help out there. That's a great segue to my next question. Right? That's the real world application. I see a running in a senior living facility, for example, maybe a scoop, right? You can also not only take care of seniors, but maybe you take care of kids. Sure. And uh, what else do I yeah, we, we are definitely thinking about new verticals to expand the robot into. So we've already announced a partnership with the AARP to find the best use cases for this kind of technology in senior living or aged care facilities. So I think it starts to move into areas where the robot is interacting with new different kinds of people other than just hospital staff. There will be new interactions that will have to build you know, new interfaces. We're really excited to build out all of that and just um, we already have such great use cases from our hospital partners that we think there's just room to grow from here. How many have you built so far? Yeah, we shipped around 100 Moxies out across the United States in about 30 hospital systems. Okay, how did you come out with the Moxie name? Oh, the Moxie name. Yeah, well, we wanted something short and patchy. Uh, we also 
uh, wanted something that was gender neutral. The robot is just a robot. It doesn't have a gender, so they give it a gender neutral name. And also, Moxie is uh, kind of a rare English word that means sort of like grit or like the, the willingness to get the job done. So we're called diligent robotics. Moxie is a very diligent robot, so it's got some Moxie. I love that. I've heard that you have a goal to go solve the meantime when That's five years. Less than five years away. It's yes. year, right? So how does that look like four years from today? What's your prediction? Well, yeah, so Gen 2 that we've already announced is built for scale. So we've designed it to be more manufacturable, more maintainable, more reliable. That's going to allow us to really supercharge the, the manufacturing capabilities. And then in terms of deploying more robots into the field, it'll just be about adding more and more use cases for robots can help do more and more things around the hospital. I think that that's an easy path to getting to it now. Love that. It's manufacturable, maintainable, reliable. Yes. yes. Love it. Well, thank you so much for your time, and um, I look forward to seeing you maybe next time at GTC. Yeah, sounds March, great. Right? So let's check in more. And before you do that, maybe you just have Moxie, Moxie walk, wave to everybody. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Awesome.